Well, hello. Uh, again, I'm Professor Meiskins. I'm going to get my lab glasses on. Uh, I'm going to give you a demonstration of the liquid handling uh, techniques for this lab three where we're watching the kinetics of crystal violet. So we are going to put some crystal violet and some sodium hydroxide solution into these two beakers. We're going to mix them and then put them in the cuvette and put them in our spectrophotometer. So to prepare those, we need uh, for this first round 10 mLs of each and we want to do that uh, accurately and precisely. So to get a precise amount of the sodium hydroxide, we're going to use the 10 mL volumetric pipette. So we're going to get that meniscus right to this little line here. And um, this is an important uh, liquid handling technique, and so I will demonstrate it. Now, it takes a little bit of uh, uh, looking and some common sense in the lab. I have a bottle of the sodium hydroxide, and uh, but the rule in the lab is you can't put your pipette directly in here. That's uh, more than likely going to contaminate the solution for all the other users of it. So we want to pour this into a beaker and we have to use some common sense about what's the right size of beaker. So for a 10 ml pipette, I'm going to pick a 30 ml beaker and I know I need at least 10 mLs and I need some volume so it doesn't suck it dry in the, in the bottom. So somewhere between 15 and 20 mLs in this smallest beaker will be enough. And so I'm going to pour out some of that. I don't have to worry a lot about exactly how much, just enough. And then I'm going to use my pipette to deliver 10 mLs into one of these two beakers. So I have my bulb ready, I have my pipette ready, and I like to use my forefinger to hold the top. And I'm going to be paying attention to where the bottom of my pipette is. So I put this pipette in the liquid, I squeeze my bulb. I don't have to squeeze it all the way, and I'm under some control letting it come up in the liquid and paying attention to the liquid level. I'm letting it get above there, and I'm going to pull that off. And now, of course, it drops below the little mark. If I hold my pipette tip down at the bottom, it won't drain too quickly. I'm going to squeeze my bulb a little bit and bring it up above the mark with some control. Let go. And now I have it above. Now I have the meniscus. I'm letting it fall just a little bit with a little release of pressure. And I'm right there. I'm actually a little bit below. I'm going to, I can show you what I've got here. I've gone a little bit below my mark. So I'm going to bring it up again. So this just shows you even someone who does this a fair amount of the time uh, has to has to go back and forth. So I'm going to watch this meniscus. I have to put some pressure on my finger to keep it sealed, and I'm sliding it just a little bit to get that meniscus right there. Okay, that goes into one of the beakers. This is a two deliver pipette. It has TD written on the side. So true for chemistry is that we just let it deliver the amount. And uh, we can take the little uh, bit off the end, but we're going to leave this little bit left in the end of it. That one is sodium hydroxide. We'll clean that in a moment. So I have 10 mLs here. I'm going to get 10 mLs in the other beaker with crystal violet. Now in this case, we're going to use a bottle top dispenser to give 10.00 mLs. 
so that's this bottle, of this very violent solution. And to do this, I'm going to hold the beaker under the spigot. I'm going to raise this gently up to the top. And then I'm going to guide it back down to the bottom. And now I've done 10 ml. And that was an easy, uh, easy delivery. Now, uh, this beaker, which had the sodium hydroxide in it, is uh, going to be confusing because the sodium nitrate you'll use in the second part looks just the same. So I'm going to write on here NaOH in Sharpie, and that can be taken off later with a little acetone. So now that's labeled, I also set it next to the sodium hydroxide. Now, these are our two liquids. I'm going to mix these, put them in a cuvette here, and I'm going to stick it in my SpectroViz Plus. There is a little uh, triangle here at the top, and I can get that lined up with the triangle here. And you'll notice that there's, our, there's clear, uh, clear sides and translucent sides. And the clear side is what we want in the beam path, which goes from the white light source to the triangle on the SpectroViz Plus. Okay, so I'm ready to mix, and I want to show you how to easily get good mixing. So I'm going to pour one into the other, and just back and forth. And now that is well mixed. I'm going to pour this into my cuvette. Try not to put too much in there. So that's a good fill. And I find my triangle. I slip this in here and I click collect. So this is not like the uh, experiment a week ago where it waits for a trigger. This one will just start collecting. Now I'm getting my absorbance values and I just crossed the absorbance of one. So we see that this is decay or decreasing. And we can also watch our solution of crystal violet and we'll see that fade. That's exactly what's going on inside the cuvette. And so we're getting our data. And as time goes, this is decreasing. The color is fading in my crystal violet. And, uh, and we're watching this happen. So um, this is now to about one half of its original value in um, just about maybe less than a minute. So the experiment's gonna go pretty quick. And um, we will uh, let this play out. Okay, so you can see now that the uh, color in my beaker, the crystal violet, has uh, is not completely gone, but it's pretty, pretty faint now. Uh, the absorbance here in my curve has faded to less than 0.1, and that's good enough. Uh, we've discovered in the analysis that analyzing this data between absorbance of 0.7 and 0.2 is, um, is good. I just let this go a little bit beyond all the way to below 0.1, and I can click stop. Hi again, uh, I'm gonna just uh, carry this a little further. For the second part, I'm putting five mLs of my sodium hydroxide into this beaker. And I am going to put five mLs of sodium nitrate, which is the other solution, in there as well. So I've used my five mL pipette, volumetric pipette. It has sodium hydroxide in the base. So I'm going to show you that I'm just going to rinse this out with distilled water. That way I'm not taking any of that sodium hydroxide that's at the tip of this pipette into the, into the uh, next measurement. So I'm wiping the outside and I've even used uh, uh, these Kim wipes here to get some of that um, last bit of liquid there. 
So this is ready for my sodium hydroxide. I mean, sorry, don't want to get them mixed up. My sodium nitrate is going to be the makeup solution. So the total volume is going to be 10 mLs. And so I'm going to deliver that some into the speaker for the next, next round. Okay, so all the best as you uh, work through this lab. Okay, if you're watching this, you are a person who's been forced to be remote for this lab. And uh, we really first of all uh, hope and pray that we can all be restored to in-person labs and it's where you get the, the best experience. So I'm going to do the second uh, kinetics run. I've already predicted, made my beakers. This one now has half of the hydroxide concentration. I'm going to mix them, pour them in my cuvette and collect another curve. So I'm going to go store latest run. We've got that first one there. I'm going to mix, mix, mix. Now with the hydroxide concentration lower, we expect that we are going to have a slower reaction. So I'm going to click collect, and now we are going to be collecting data that's going to take a little longer. And uh, because it's slower, uh, even though I was not really rushing that much, um, we have a nice strong violet color. Um, it's, uh, it's taking longer, and uh, we started off at a higher absorbance and it's going at a, a slower rate. So we're gonna wait a little bit longer here. And uh, once we get our absorbance down to uh, around 0.1, we'll stop it. We'll have our uh, data. And this I'm gonna save in a file that you should be able to open up and then perform the analysis as it's described in the instructions. So um, that's our introduction. I'll uh, pause our video and come back uh, when we have a better, uh, fuller picture of it. All right, so our absorbance now is uh, at 0.23. We're getting pretty close to the end of our curve, so I'm going to extend this experiment uh, for a little bit longer. And here you can see that the color is definitely not the same violet color we had at the beginning. It's fading. And all the spectrometer does is quantitatively monitor how that fading is happening with time. We're at 0.2, so we basically have all the data that we need in order to do our fitting. I'm just going to let it proceed a little further until we get to 0.1, and then, um, and then I'm going to stop it, and then that's all the data that we need. So this file I'm going to save so that you can open this up. You'll need Logger Pro on your, uh, your device, your laptop, in order to analyze this data. If that presents a problem, then I would like you to email uh, your lab instructor, and we will make some accommodations in order to allow you to do this analysis. But uh, the most straightforward way is to, to model what's happening in the lab, which is this will be a file which will have this data, and you're going to fit these data um, this decay is clearly showing uh, uh, a curved decay. And whether that curve best matches a first order model or a second order model is what you'll discover by doing this fitting process. And um, uh, so ideally you'll get Logger Pro, you can, you can follow the fitting procedure and uh, figure out which model works best and it's going to help you to determine the rate constants and um, these uh, exponents for the rate law. Um, we're down to 0.12. That looks uh, pretty good to me. So I'm going to stop it now. And I'll store the latest run. And now you can see when we put less hydroxide ion and we lowered its concentration, it also meant this took longer, and it means that the, the effective rate constant for that second run 
is going to be lower. And uh, by fitting, we'll be able to figure out quantitatively how much lower. So best wishes as you analyze this. And by all means, if you have trouble with uh, getting a Logger Pro running on your, on your computer, uh, I will post this file on Moodle so that you can download it, open it in Logger Pro. And if that presents trouble, uh, contact your lab instructor by email and we'll, we'll figure out how we can make that work best. Okay, all the best.